in the INDCs, um, through the uh, National Mission for Enhanced uh, Energy Efficiency, we uh, uh, intend to achieve something like a capacity addition of about 20,000 megawatts and fuel savings of about 23 million tons per year at its full implementation stage. And then, of course, our commitment to produce 40% of electricity from renewable energy sources, which Harish will add on after this. At the national level, we've got these multitude of initiatives. Under the NMEE, we have these four initiatives. And um, some of you may be aware, but a lot of these, uh, uh, um, uh, a lot of these uh, actually followed up after the creation of the Bureau of Energy Efficiency, which is about 14 years old now. These are the four um, uh, uh, initiatives under the NMEE. And then there have been fuel economy uh, policies, all adding towards en energy efficiency, the ECBC, the Energy Conservation Building Code, and a lot of stress on the National Mission on Sustainable Habitat, which uh, uh, talks about sustainable habitat standards, energy performance buildings, and energy efficient constructions. Now with that background, let me move on to a few initiatives that Terry's been taking towards energy efficiency. And the first one is smart mini grids. And we've designed, developed, and demonstrated these smart mini grids. You can actually go across, it's on this uh, Faridabad Gurgaon Road uh, on, in our campus over there. Um, and you can actually see this uh, working over there. The objective, of course, is to have um, uh, optimal use of energy from various sources. And when we are talking about the plethora of uh, distributed energy generation, which we expect to have a predominant uh, uh, share in the renewable energy in India, uh, this would be very useful. Um, if you go there, you would see um, wind generation, PV, solar PV, biomass gasifier, diesel generator, and a battery bank all linked to this uh, smart mini grid. And um, uh, you can, uh, the each, each of these sources has its own controller, but there is one uh, intelligent controller which actually determines based on the supply available and the demand on which source should actually feed into what you, would, what you need. The second, of course, is uh, energy efficient buildings. You would have heard of Griha. This is, uh, has been developed as a rating tool which assesses the performance of a building and this has been accepted by the government of India. It is a standard now used predominantly um, as against the LEED standard, across, which is used globally. And um, we, uh, I think any of our campuses of Terry are really walking the talk. If you go and have a look at these campuses, these are really uh, reflections of the efforts to pr uh, promote energy efficiency. In all these campuses, you've got solar passive strategies, renewable energy, um, the use of energy efficient lighting, and most importantly, and this is where most of the energy is used in any building, low energy space conditioning systems. So let me give you two examples of these low energy space um, uh, conditioning systems where uh, it's not really jugard, but we've actually gone back, the thing which uh, uh, Satya was talking about. Um, we uh, have used traditional knowledge to be able to uh, uh, be energy efficient. Now this is um, uh, what is called the earth air tunnel, which uses the principle, um, w uh, if you were to go four to six meters below the earth, then the average, the temperature there would be equal to the average ambient temperature of that place. So like in Delhi, if uh, we have a temperature ranging from 45 to about four degrees, the average temperature is around 28. So if you were to dig four to six meters below and make a room there, you would always have 28 through the year. So what we do is we put tunnels around the whole campus at a depth of four to six meters and suck out this air and supply it to the building. Now you're getting 28 degrees air, you'd need to only cool it down to 24 or so to be comfortable. So the amount of energy required is close to nil. The second one, again, is using some traditional knowledge. This is uh, called a thermal mass storage, but again, just uses a basic principle of evaporative cooling, 
Um, you all remember a few years ago, we used to use desert coolers in Delhi and not air conditioners. All that we did was water flowing on top of uh, wood shavings. Now what we've done is instead of wood shavings, you use a, a honeycomb of bricks. So we've got a tower running uh, from the basement up to the fourth floor filled with a honeycomb of bricks and you spray water in the night, you cool down these stones. In the daytime, you shut down the water and you suck ambient air through it. So you're cooling down the air and all you need is a pump for recirculation of the water uh, to be able to cool down. If you go to the Terry University, all the classrooms and the laboratories are cooled through this system. Cook stoves, a lot of work has been done in, um, uh, and, and uh, you know, if you were to uh, look at a cook stove with a efficiency of 10% and, and create a efficient one with about 30%, uh, the increased cost of that would actually be paid back in a few months. That's all. This is an example. I've, I've just picked up one. There are five, six of these uh, been designed there. But the efficiency of this cook stove is around 40%. And its cost is about 2,000 rupees uh, if you were to use uh, direct AC power. But if you use a solar panel and a battery, it goes up to about 3,800. Of course, a lot of energy efficiency is required in the industry and um, Terry's been contributing by doing a lot of energy audits which have, res which have resulted in a lot of energy savings in these industries. In the MSMEs also, um, uh, we've gone a little more than just energy audits and have come up with technological solutions for small industries, especially focusing on um, the glass, the brick industry where foundries are being used. So um, uh, these are some examples, and I did give you the example of uh, the Lighting a Billion Lives where um, we're reaching out to a large number of people. But um, before I uh, uh, finish, I, I thought we'll just talk about a few barriers which, uh, uh, which are faced when um, you try to do energy efficient or try to find energy efficient solutions. Um, the first, of course, is the reluctance to make uh, the initial investment. That's, that's uh, a very apparent thing. And that happens much more in the poorer uh, section of society. Uh, when you want to finance these projects within the banking community, there is, uh, a, uh, there is a, a trust deficit. There, it's definite. If you go across and ask for financing, you do get um, uh, looks as if you know, it's better to finance something else. There's a lack of awareness. To top it all, there are perceived risks, risks which don't actually exist. And, and these are coming up more and more in, uh, in the minds, not only of the bankers who would supply finance, but also in people who might want to become entrepreneurs in this area. Capacity building, and that's something which I think we need to uh, involve a lot of the youth in trying to uh, invest in sensitization and training programs. Regulatory and insula uh, institutional barriers, as, as I said, whilst a lot of work has been done, I think what's uh, uh, necessary is to um, uh, have many more incentives which would push people into, into uh, uh, getting across these barriers. Finally, I think there are infrastructural issues. If you go to the villages or, or even uh, peri-urban areas, there's a lot of unmetered electrical supply. It's, it's just supplied at a flat rate. Um, that causes a problem not just of uh, recovery of the cost, but it also causes a problem when you want to uh, have a feed in. If you are generating more than, if, if in the end we are talking about prosumers and we expect a feed into the grid, it, it, we won't know how to do this. There are governance issues. When I spoke about the states being involved, uh, what's happening is at the states there are a plethora of agencies and most of them don't speak to each other. So there are, um, uh, there are governance issues uh, involved at that level also.